Hey, what's up guys? Waltz How To's and Reviews. Today I'm going to be reviewing the Artillery Sidewinder X1 3D Printer. If you don't know anything about 3D printers and shopping for one, I recommend you watch this video right here or there will be a link in the description that just kind of teaches you all the terminology of 3D printers and makes it so you can be an educated shopper. Now, I made another video called the best 3D printer to buy in 2021. And this is almost a follow up to that because in that video I recommended buying the Prusa. I recommended buying the Creality machine, specifically the Ender 3 and the CR10. This is a heavily modified Ender 3 Max, which is kind of a hybrid of the two. I also recommended the FL Sun Delta printers. And last but not least, I recommended this guy, but I said I was taking a big risk by buying this guy. I just wanted to let people know the risk was well worth the reward. Obviously, I am really happy and satisfied with it. I love this machine and I would highly recommend it, but I do want to specifically talk about the bad in this video just to help people that are on the fence or considering buying this machine. Because what you'll find is most of the reviews on this machine are positive, but the few that are negative are like scary, terrifying negative, like it'll burn down your house negative. Which if you're like me, you'd probably want to know more about that before you buy this machine. Now another great tip before buying a 3D printer is on Facebook there's usually a group associated with that 3D printer. You can go join or check out that group and you're going to see, you know, all the people that are buying this machine, what kind of problems are they having? What has the user experience been like? What kind of questions do people ask? That sort of thing. So obviously I'm a part of the artillery one and I've never seen, I've only been on there six months, but I've never seen anything about a fire being started. So that's good news. Another reason I mention that is I, I don't talk to any of these uh, companies. I've never talked to Creality Prusa, FL Sun, or Artillery, but I have seen them respond to posts on Facebook. And one thing I noticed that Artillery said is there actually is no version, no like version one, two, three, and four. They just make them in batches and when they make a new batch, sometimes they'll swap out the parts or try something new. I could be wrong there, again, I haven't talked to Artillery, but I'm pretty sure I saw them post that in the Facebook group. Now, the reason I say that is I bought mine December 2020, and a lot of the issues that I see in some of the reviews or negative stuff about this, I don't think exist on mine, and that would be my understanding of the reason why is this product has been evolving and therefore they've changed it. Now hopefully they're always changing it for the better and you know a newer one that just came out today isn't worse than this guy. I would, I would expect and hope that it would be better. But again, with that Facebook group, I feel like overwhelmingly the people really like this machine and a lot of them have multiple 3D printers and still boast about this machine. I've noticed a lot of times someone will get the machine, they're excited and they're like, what modifications should I do? And a lot of the experienced 3D printer people are like, that's what's so great about this machine is you really don't need to modify it. It just works well out of the box. So let's cover the bad, right? First thing that I saw was a concern is that the actual frame of this 3D printer was not grounded and therefore a safety concern. So I tested that. Here's what I found. All right, so I wanted to check if this was grounded. I'm not an electrician, so maybe I'm doing something wrong. Please let me know if I am. I set this to continuity. I think that's how you say it, so that when uh, the circuit's complete, it uh, makes a beeping noise. I'm gonna hold one end on the ground prong, and then I'm just gonna touch a screw that's screwed into the frame here, and it beeps. So my understanding is that that means that it is grounded, so that's good news. Now another way this thing could be a fire hazard was the way that the wires attach to the heated bed. Now a benefit is that it's mains voltage so it heats really quickly. The bed heats up super fast relative to other printers. However, there was a concern that those wires were going to kink, break, and be a fire hazard. Here's what I found with my wires. The other thing is uh, the strain relief. That because there isn't strain relief, this is going to possibly be fire hazardous and eventually these wires are going to wear out and uh, not work. So I did buy some silicone wire and I wanted to extend these and add the strain relief, but as far as I can tell, let me make sure this camera is picking it up. Right here, they did add like some strain relief. Like I don't know what this is, but this part does not bend. So get the full range of the bed here. When I come all the way over here, this part isn't bending. When I come back all the way over here, it's still not bending. Now the concern is, is throughout here, you know that it's kinking and bending so we can watch it. It does have some areas like right there, at least with this wrap, I can see it starts to uh, kink there. The rest of this seems pretty bent and then 
right where it actually goes into the frame here, let's watch it. You see, for mine at least, those are the two points that bend the most. And when it's fully in the front like that, like when it presents a print when it's done, um, you can see, yeah, it's, I mean, they didn't leave any extra room. <laughs> you know, I'm not an electrician, I don't know how bad that is. So let's go ahead and cut this open and see what these wires look like and what's happening there. And the biggest kink is, is right here. I cut this off so I could see what's going on, on the inside. And there would be another kink, I think right about here, but you can see fully all the way there. I mean, they didn't add any extra wire, that's for sure. But this is the concern is like right here. And to me, I mean, that looks like a pretty big U for silicone wiring and they use silicone wiring. So again, I'm not an electrician, I'm not claiming anything here, but it doesn't look like the concerns I've heard or seen. So I'm assuming that this is fine and that they fixed those issues. Please let me know what your thoughts are. If, if I'm wrong, I'm not claiming anything here. Now, again, I'm not an expert electrician, but what I've seen on the Facebook group and what I would expect for this to happen is if the wires are gonna kink and break, it's gonna be the wires that are taking the temperature on the bed, not the wires supplying the mains voltage, at least in my version or my setup, the, the 3D printer that I got. I did buy extra cables that are silicone cables because I was just gonna extend them and put a drag chain on it. But after inspecting it, I'm like, eh, just feel like I don't wanna do that extra work for something that isn't necessary at this moment. Another complaint was this right here. This is the holder for the filament. And the way it works is there's these holes right here and those attach directly into the frame. And the biggest complaint was some spools are thinner or wider than others. So you would have to loosen those screws, move it, retighten it and adjust for different filaments which is true and you should be aware of. The only other negative I saw with that, I've bought some cheap filament where basically, you know, you put it on the spool, it like comes wound up to save money and it's not really wound tight. So as it pulls, some of it'll get loose. And a piece of that loose filament went up underneath here and just got caught on there. So it looked like this. And then it would like bind up on this piece of metal here and uh, not work. That only happened with this guy. So this, this isn't the best design. I know some people argue it's a great design because it's super efficient, it saves a lot of space, compacts this large printer into the smallest space it can, and these ball bearing, you know, all metal wheels roll really nicely and smoothly. And I did find for most filaments, it worked great. The reason I made these two little attachments and did it this way, one was when I put it on the shelf, it doesn't actually fit. And the other reason was I was using this cheaper filament and I didn't want to worry about it getting wound up while I'm sleeping at night and uh, have an issue or something like that. All right, another negative I saw about this 3D printer was that this part, the actual heat break that connects to the nozzle, had a PTFE tube in it. And because of that, if you wanted to print in higher temperatures, you could run into the issue of heat creep or those Teflon tubes can only go to a certain degree and so you wouldn't be able to print high temperature filaments. Now, when I first got this machine, I was printing all PLA while I was prototyping a product, but this product that I have right here, I actually need it to be in um, PET-G, which is a higher temperature filament. And I was just curious, you know, how long is it gonna be before it clogs or before I have issues? So I started printing with this and I would change up the temperature to test different strengths and that sort of thing. And it never clogged. I just kept waiting for it to clog and it just never did, which was surprising to me. I eventually did swap it out with a hot end like this where it is all metal, so I didn't have to worry about it. I was mainly worried about the off-gassing though, in case I wanted to go up to temperatures like 260 Celsius. But the point is, it never actually clogged on me. I never got that heat creep issue. Let me know in the comments if you have artillery and it has had that issue of heat creep or just an issue with that PTFE tubing. One more thing I'll say about that, when I was new to 3D printing, I thought that was something unique to the artillery sidewinder or possibly unusual, but that's how most 3D printers come and are, is they have a PTFE line tubing in the heat break. The point is though, that's actually the norm. Another big complaint is uh, the plastic idler arm that you push back to insert new filament. That was breaking on people. So when I first bought this machine, I actually bought a couple metal arms planning to replace it. I don't know if it was like earlier versions or something, but it seems pretty strong to me. Like you'd really have to try to break it. Maybe they did change the design or something and they're recommending replacing with a metal one. Now, 
you know, you can see they're pretty much the same profile with some differences. And now the difference is I noticed there's a ball bearing in here, at least with the two that I have that are just not fully encased like it is here on the plastic and this one actually has grooves not sure how much that picks up i'll get a shot where the ptf tube like puts it right in that groove and the filament slides on it whereas the ptf tube in both of these i have you know there's it stops there and it's going to come down i'm not sure like how well does this actually guide it so we're going to slide the filament in here and then this is supposed to help keep the filament guided and feeding it into the hot end. Now, I just feel like, okay, what's a better design? This guy or this plastic guy where the filament is actually riding on something here to where if it wants to, you know, bow out sideways or something like that, especially like a flexible filament, I feel like it's more trapped to where it can't do that versus on this guy, I feel like, you know, hey, that might actually be easier for it because there's nothing keeping it from going side to side. So it could, you know, maybe bow out the side. Please chime in if you have an idea or know why it would be better to have the metal arm. Maybe the two that I got here are not good ones and you shouldn't get them, but I just can't help but think that if this doesn't break, it's a better design and it's gonna work well with like flexible filaments. That's what my intuition's telling me. My intuition's telling me don't replace this. It's actually better than at least these ones I got and it's not weak. Like I don't see how you break it unless you really are yanking down on this thing. It confuses me like how in the heck do people break it? Are they just going through? Or what I suspect is probably most likely is it was an earlier design of this piece and it didn't have these rigidity things and it just would break easy. You tell me, I don't know. I'm just waiting for it to break and it hasn't broke. But watch, now that I said that, it'll probably break tomorrow. <laughs> Another issue I saw out there is that this glass bed right here is not the best design. Now I've heard a few different things, mainly that the way it heats, that it's uneven heating, and just that there's better materials to make the bed out of like this. Now the bed is not removable and that can be a bit of a bummer, but personally, my experience with I think it's some kind of build tack, like this glass bed with whatever they have or are using for the film service on there, it's been spectacular. Mainly, it heats up and almost everything sticks to it. But what's really amazing about this is when it cools down, it literally just releases like nothing. Like I just pulled this one off and you might've heard it like detach, but watch, I'll pull this guy off. This was stuck on the bed after printing it. Like, yeah, see it just, comes right off it wasn't even stuck and I've let this glass cool down and, and watch I don't even know if it'll be stuck it might just yep there's a little bit see if you can hear it that's how it releases see this one it's uh it's amazing and this is a uh, pet G material which if you have something like the Prusa you're gonna have to put down something in between there like some glue stick because it'll stick to this and it'll break it off so me personally after using other products and stuff i think this is amazing it's nice with these you can bend them to help break it off but you can see it just it just lifts up i don't have to bend anything to break it off so don't really need that function i do wish it was removable so i could take it to a sink and clean it or something like that but in terms of quality maybe i'm crazy but i think this is one of the best beds you could possibly get and that's why I haven't swapped it out for something different. Now I do see over time, you know, I usually just rub it with some rubbing alcohol, start printing again. I can see the middle parts are starting to get a little worn. It's been about six months. So I can imagine maybe a couple of years that that coating will wear off and then I'll need to replace the bed. But so far it's been great. Now one of the biggest things I have seen on Facebook is complaints about this bed not being level. And it seems to be a bit of a crapshoot. The two most common things are is in the center, it's higher or lower. So it's concave or it kind of bulges in the middle, which can be hard to get leveling down because you're leveling the four corners. And then in the middle, you know, you're too close or too far away. So that is something to think about, but I feel like that's gonna be common on most of the 3D printers you're gonna buy out there. It isn't unique and specific to the Artillery X1. Now the workaround that I did for it is I just added auto bed leveling. I'll show some footage of my bed through Octoprint and like how flat it is and it's 
pretty darn flat. But adding a BL touch is actually pretty easy if you use the Wagster mod. Quick tip right there is if it's not working, just flip your wires, uh, the part that goes into the main board, flip that around, try it again, I bet it'll start working. So one of the things in the video, this is the orientation that Steve had it, and there is a tab, and it's facing down. But when he shows the lights when he's flashing the firmware, this is flipped, and the tab is facing up. And that is going to switch the orientation of the three wires on your BL Touch. So if you have a problem, that's probably the most common, and you're going to want to flip that. You want the solid red on the BL Touch. If it's like blinking red, then you need to flip those wires. So the auto bed level brings me to my next point. There is a con that, you know, it's harder to modify because it uses ribbon cables instead of traditional cables. Something like this to where if you're going to swap out parts, this is all new. And I actually think it would be easier on the artillery because basically the ribbon cable goes to a little chip. And on that chip, there's a bunch of connections. And those connections are the typical connections that come with stuff like the extruder, thermistor, heater cartridge, part cooling fan, and regular fan. So if you just buy a new part cooling fan, you can it comes out of the box with a little connector on it. You can just put it on there and put it into the chip. Maybe I'm missing something there, but it seems like it'd be pretty easy to me. But I do understand like, hey, originally people were thinking if you wanted to add a BL touch, you're just gonna have to run a wire. That's not gonna look good with the ribbon cable. And that's a very valid point. Now, since then, the community did figure out a way, basically that Wagster mod, highly recommend to check it out, to repurpose the LED light that is on the hot end that these other printers don't come with to use those connections, those wires that went to the LED light to repurpose them to go to an auto bed leveling system such as the BL Touch. So then you still have that clean look and appearance of the ribbon cables. I personally have had zero issues with the ribbon cables. To me, I think it's an added feature or bonus, mainly because this looks like a polished up clean product. And what I mean by that is if you look at another machine, like you can see the guts in it. You can see there's just wires coming out and it's like plugged in here and stuff versus this. It's just really clean and neat. This base is completely enclosed and it just looks more like a product rather than a DIY project, which could be a con for a lot of people. I totally get that. The one thing I could see happening is when you go to pull something off the bed. If you lift up, you could hit this ribbon cable and maybe rip it out. That's like the one thing I could see happening. I haven't actually had that happen, but thought I should mention it because you know I, I could see that that would happen. All right, so I think I covered most of the bad stuff I could find about this machine out there. If there's anything else you want me to answer, just leave it in the comments. But I just wanted to wrap this video up with explaining why it is one of my favorite 3D printers and why I would highly recommend it. And it really comes down to two things. One is it's very reliable and it just works. Two is I think it's in a phenomenal value. So this machine has been one of my most reliable. It starts prints well, not a lot of print failures, haven't had to do a lot of maintenance on it. It just works and it works really well straight out of the box. You don't have to do a lot of modifications to it to get it up to a high quality printing. And the value aspect, you know, you get a direct drive extruder. It's super quiet. It's really fast. It's a huge build volume, 300 by 300 by 400. I love the glass bed and the build tack or whatever they're using to make stuff stick. I like that it does have a USB stick because that's what most people have in their home I feel like. You also have the mini SD if you want to use that. And completely opinion, beauty's in the eye of the beholder. I think it's one of the best looking 3D printers. So for the value, what you get for the money, and the fact that it's a great machine that works, that's why I highly recommend this. And why if I had to buy another machine right now, I would buy this guy. I ordered the FL Sun Speed Racer and I'm really excited to try that one out because on paper it has super promising stats, but we'll see if that's actually true and how reliable it is relative to this guy when I get it. But yeah, I hope this video was helpful to anyone out there considering getting this guy. If you like the video, please like, comment, or subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.